Don't interrupt me as you're talking about abortion rights and you say you support a woman's right to choose. Shut up and listen. As someone who's a mom, as someone who could have died herself, okay? It's time for you to shut up and listen to the women who are telling you loud and clear, we are dying out here. You're putting our lives on the line out here. Women in red states, women in blue states, women all over. It doesn't matter whether we love Trump or we hate Trump. The effect of overturning Roe v. Wade is the same. Our lives are on the line. Piers Morgan had Francesca Fantini on his show, Piers Morgan Uncensored, where she found herself going head-to-head -head with a group of right-wing panelists. This time, the lineup included Fox host Kat Timpf, conservative influencer Emily Austin, and former conservative MP Louise Mensch from the UK. And of course, Francesca also had to contend with Piers Morgan himself, who often leans to the right. The discussion centered around whether Donald Trump is truly a protector of women. As you might expect, things got heated pretty quickly. Francesca didn't hold back, taking aim at both Trump and the conservative voices on the panel. We're going to check out some clips of that exchange, and I'll share my take on what went down. Let's dive in. Yeah, I want to play you a clip of Donald Trump talking about how you protect women. This was a rally in Pennsylvania on Monday. You will be protected and I will be your protector. Women. <laughs> women will be happy, healthy, confident, and free. You will no longer be thinking about abortion. So all they talk about abortion because We've done something that nobody else could have done. It is now where it always had to be with the states and a vote of the people. Jessica, do you feel yeah. that Donald is your big protector? You're looking forward to being protected oh. by him? Mm, how much time do you have? Uh, yeah, I like how this is just an ad for like Stepford Wives 2025. You won't be thinking about abortion because we'll do mass lobotomies. Like, no, thank you. Why does this sound like less of a promise and more of a threat, right? Like, and yeah, he's right. He did something no other politician could do. He's increased maternal mortality rate by exorbitant uh, rates. Over in Texas, 56% of pregnant women have been uh, facing mortality rates because the hospitals do not want to treat their very, very treatable conditions Again, these are people who want to be parents. These are not people who are seeking abortion. But then we talk about those women, let's say in Georgia, who have died because hospital workers, because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade, are too afraid to perform necessary life-saving procedures on women. So, yeah, I, I love this, like, weird promise. You're not going to be thinking about it anymore. Like, for all this, like, you know anti-Haitian rhetoric. He's sure doing weird voodoo mind tricks on all of us. Like, I don't want a protector. Thank you. Least of all you, man who hung out with Jeffrey Epstein and P. Diddy. Uh-uh. No thanks. Pass. Hard pass. Francesca Fantini makes an excellent point here. It's incredible how Donald Trump has spent the last year or so claiming that no one wanted Roe v. Wade, which couldn't be further from the truth. Roe v. Wade had around a two-thirds approval rating in the United States, meaning the vast majority of Americans did not want it overturned. As Fantini points out, handing the issue over to the states has led to a host of complications. Trump acts like each state will simply vote on it. But in reality, even in some red states where abortion has been on the ballot, people have expressed a desire to keep abortion rights and essentially return to Roe v. Wade. However, Many states, like mine, for example, won't even allow abortion to be voted on. So we're now facing a situation where some states will have legal abortion and others will outlaw it completely, leaving people in those states without any say in the matter. Emily, um, what do you feel about Donald the protector for all women? I think, uh, excuse me, I forgot her name. She's just a clear Francesca face Fiorentini of what the situation. Trump syndrome is because excuse me can you hear me um she's a clear portrait of what tds is because you have donald trump who everyone claims wants to get rid of abortion who wants to violate women's reproductive rights go out there and reassure everyone like he said numerous times i do not plan on taking this right away from you i will protect you women do feel unsafe today 
the whole country is in a state of lawlessness. So here he is reassuring you that everything's going to be okay. All these right-wingers love to throw around the TDS or Trump derangement syndrome label. And honestly, it's getting exhausting. It feels like something a child would say to dismiss a real argument. But to be honest, I think a lot of kids show more maturity and self-awareness than some of these people. Somehow you'll manage to spin that into something negative and make a comedic skit out of it when this is exactly what the people need to be hearing. But then again, you have TDS, so I understand. Uh, Louise, what, what do you feel about Trump? So, I mean, look, there's no doubt that for every woman that doesn't like Trump in America, there's pretty much a woman who loves him. Um, that's what all the polling says. I mean, that's so, that's so another point Francesca makes is in response to Piers Morgan's claim that for every woman who dislikes Trump, there's another who supports him, suggesting that Trump has a 50 percent approval rating among women. This statement seems quite exaggerated and the data doesn't really back it up. Approval ratings among women have generally shown much lower support for Trump than that, which raises questions about where this claim is coming from. So unscientific peers, that is Piers, such Piers, a that's load not of what the polling craft, says. If I could just, that is, like that the, is not what it says. There is a you huge just literally lead woke for Kamala Harris among women. What? There is a huge lead for Kamala Harris among women. Absolutely huge. In fact, that's what Trump opened with. I gather that some women don't like me. I don't know why. I think I'm great. Well, thanks, Captain Bone Spurs. But I don't need you. The real Trump derangement syndrome is thinking that Trump could protect anybody. And if you want to talk about seeing dead people the way that Kat did the other day, Trump literally said, bring back Johnny Carson to The Tonight Show. The man's been dead for years. You see, Can but you that's OK. But that's no, Joe no, Biden who hang did on, that. Hang on. That's a classic example of where the Trump loathers get so deranged they deliberately misrepresent what actually got said and what happened. Piers Morgan often defends Donald Trump on his show, despite his repeated claims that he isn't a right winger. He even mentions how people in the UK would laugh at the idea of him being labeled as such. However, many viewers from the UK have commented that Piers has long held right wing views. On his show, it's clear he frequently sides with Trump and is quick to challenge progressives like Francesca Fantini or Democrats, such as Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. It's a pattern that seems to play out regularly during his broadcasts. Happened. I watched that clip in its entirety, and he knows Johnny Carson's dead. He was making the point, I wish we had Johnny Carson to bring back. He never said That's he thinks he's... That's not what he said, Piers. He never said he thinks he he's said, still alive. Back Nobody Johnny watching Carson. it. That's a direct Nobody point. watching it thinks Trump thinks he's still alive. It, but it's a bit like the he's gonna. He's he, it's a bit like the bloodbath thing, right? He's Isn't senile. it? It's a bit like the bloodbath thing, where he's we're senile. all led to believe by Kamala Harris in that debate that Trump warned if he doesn't win, there'll be a bloodbath, and we all have this imagery of wow, everyone's going to be dying. And then yeah, you remember. Hang, like, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Calm down, what lefties. Mean, do you remember and what then, happened? Calm down. I'd like to think. But here's you're being so. Go on. You're so dishonest, dude. You're so dishonest, though, because all you do on this show is play off social media algorithms to get people to fight. You lead with it in the cold open and you get the click, click, clicks. And if you don't hit a mill, you never ask that person back. You literally play the game that Kat is decrying. And I think that I love the idea, especially I love Kat's book and the way it, it targets women, because specifically women are the ones who it's like, if we say one thing that you don't like, ah, I hated you from the beginning, right? Women are extra vulnerable to this, especially online. But Pierre, stop pretending like you think there's something wrong and we can't. Why you know, can't Francesca, we there's the one central there's, there's a flaw. algorithm yeah, is Francesca, based on it. Your whole lovely, model is based on Francesca, it. Francesca, it's a lovely statement that will get you lots of clicks uh, from your followers, and that's why you've just delivered your little monologue. However, it's based Bro, on I'm a, here. Wait a I'm minute. here on this panel for saying, free. It's based on an entire. Have, it's based on a false premise. I, I do not you, have nearly the following. You don't. That you, do. you don't I'm just normally get. Out your wait own a minute. You don't normally get a million views for me, but I still invite you back. So, so that can't be true. I do it as an act of charity because I like you. I check the sets. You know, you know I crush. You know I crush Pierce. <laughs> I like having you on because you're so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Um, Pierce, can I add something? Yes. I wanted to respond to Luis. And uh, Luis, you know I adore you. I, I just Same. really Same. happen to think it, it's a little pathetic that a lot of the left will use complete fabrications about Trump to support their narrative, to support their policies, mm. to support Kamala Harris. 
rather than using her strengths, you know, Both if you feel like she has any, please go ahead and about amplify the other them. Side. They would... I, okay, I'll give you a clear like example. Fabrications like eating the cats view, and dogs, the those view kinds sense, of fabrications, I, I'll Emily? back it up with facts. I'll back it up with facts. No, they both do. I'm pointing on a specific example from The View today. So they spent an entire segment talking about the filibuster that is going to be debated between the six of them, whether it should be removed or not to protect women's reproductive rights. They wasted an entire segment talking about something that Trump already said he wouldn't do. So... And if you think that helps Kamala Harris, it does. But you're lying about something that Donald Trump had said and done. And my point oh, is that on, how come you need to resort to lies Emily, instead Emily, of things the that Kamala has about, as strengths? They're saying they're going to get rid of the filibuster because Kamala says it's not what Trump's going to do. Kamala says that she will bring in a national abortion measure permitting abortion, just like Roe before Roe was overturned. She will legislate it. It won't be. It will be a law. And she is saying that we'll get rid of the filibuster on the positive side so that you can't stop me from making abortion a national right. And I can tell you as a Harris supporter, all I want all day long is for Donald Trump to talk about abortion. Please yep. keep talking about yeah, it. But when you Please. do talk it's about it, okay, but when you, okay, but, but, but Louise, Louise, when people did. talk about it, hang on, when people talk about and Trump, and, when people talk about Trump and abortion, I constantly hear from Kamala Harris and everyone on the, on the left and the Democrats that Trump wants a national abortion ban. He has never said that. He she doesn't. tweets it almost In fact, every he single repeatedly, day. He's repeatedly denied that. He has no desire to do that. In fact, whenever he's mused about what he thinks a, any kind of federal... We, obviously, he's proud he's returned to the States. Fine, that may or may not be the right call. That's down to Americans. But, but he has said openly he thinks a 15-week term limit sounds about right. That puts him in line with most moderate European countries on abortion. He's not an abortion he, extremist. To pretend he yeah, is... No. To he pretend is. he is and to deliberately misuse anything he said about this issue is just very disingenuous. I think Pierce, so too, Piers. Two Pierce, things, and two I things agree with if I may, I, that I, was, somebody, I was asked about I, this. I say I'd that like as somebody, by it. the way, who supports a like woman's to right to choose what she wants to do with her body, and we men should stick out of it. That is my personal well, position. But I don't like to see Trump regularly deliberately misquoted about this when there's evidence to the contrary. Piers, can I just say something? He picked J.D. Vance to be his vice president. Yeah. He is an elderly man. Any way you cut it, if he dies in office, just of natural causes or whatever, mm -hmm. J.D. Vance becomes the president. And J.D. Vance has said on the record many times that he, Vance, supports a national fine. abortion say, then, then, plan. Now, then it say, doesn't matter fine. Then say it about Trump J.D. Vance. Not, they're fine. Piers, and quote by, J.D. By Vance. Sending it back to the, Don't but pretend this Trump's... Don't he's pretend this Trump's ticket. position. But he's and never by, committed to veto it. It doesn't matter whether Trump it. says you know it or not. He's, 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 never said, he's been states, asked if he would veto it. Well, the, the, the other thing, by the way, the other thing, by the way, the other thing, Francesca, hang on, the other thing, Francesca, the other thing, Francesca likes to, the other thing, Francesca likes to, hang on, the other thing, Francesca likes to bang on about is the way Trump has personally packed the Supreme Court with. Francesca Fantini and other progressives will undoubtedly continue discussing this issue because Donald Trump played a significant role in shaping the current Supreme Court. He successfully appointed multiple justices, which has resulted in a very conservative court. This shift in the court's makeup is a key reason why Roe v. Wade was ultimately overturned, and it's a topic that remains at the center of debates surrounding Trump's influence on the judiciary. Conservative judges. And you know what I think? Why didn't the Democrats get their act in order and persuade their judges on that court to step aside when they could have Mitch replaced McConnell them with like younger people? Like the truth is, you allowed gobbling. yourselves as a party to be lassoed by people who went on way too long, and that created an opportunity for Trump to pat the court, as the Democrats would That's do cool. if they got the chance every single time. Fine. That's right. They Don't lose. To, Don't lose elections. Mitch so we're McConnell not lose prevented this Obama from confirming Merrick Garland. And I think what Louise is saying is, look, we don't, you can imagine, okay, a second Trump administration, what would it be like? What would it be like for women? We don't have to because it's happening right now where people mm -hmm. are bleeding out in their cars from having mm -hmm. miscarriages that should be treated and attended to. They're losing their ability to ever have children again, right? Because hospital workers are more concerned with okay. bureaucracy Francesca. than people's lives. Okay, look. So, Pierre, don't interrupt That's me ladies. as you're talking about abortion rights and you say you support a woman's right to choose. Shut up and listen. As someone who's a mom, as someone who could have died herself, okay? 
It's time for you to shut up and listen to the women who are telling you loud and clear, we are dying out here. You're putting our lives on the line out here. Women in red states, women in blue states, women all over. It doesn't matter whether we love Trump or we hate Trump. The effect of overturning Roe v. Wade is the same. Our lives are on the line, okay? Yeah, and it, yeah. we don't need to imagine the future. It is here okay. right now. You've made yeah. your point. You've made your point very falsely. Come on, change topics. Francesca Fantini delivered a passionate segment, making an important point about the serious consequences of overturning Roe v. Wade. She's right to say that, for many women, this has become a life or death issue, especially in states with strict abortion bans where women aren't able to access the care they need. Fantini also highlighted a critical issue that often gets overlooked. Donald Trump was able to appoint one of his conservative Supreme Court justices because Mitch McConnell blocked President Obama from filling an open seat, a decision that has had long-lasting effects on the court. Interestingly, Piers Morgan didn't really address what Fantini said and instead glossed over it. However, he did allow her to speak without too much interruption, which is rare. This clip has been shared widely. And I think it could go viral. Fantini herself has been posting it on her social media, and even Piers Morgan shared it. This moment is reminiscent of when Anna Kasparian gave a viral speech about not letting religion be forced on her. It would be great if Fantini's clip gained similar traction, especially her bold moment telling Piers to let her speak. What do you think about how Francesca handled this panel? She was up against Louise Mensch from the UK, who, despite being a former conservative MP, supports Kamala Harris, which made the panel slightly more balanced than usual. Of course, she also had to take on Piers Morgan. Overall, I thought Francesca did an excellent job, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It's been growing quickly, thanks to your views and support. If you haven't already, subscribing helps me continue to bring you content like this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.